Welcome back everybody to another episode of TJ Just Talk. We have Ken with me and I'm TJ, your host of this channel and another one in meekness in marriage. And today we're going to talk about doing good, doing good in your marriage and doing good as a believer in Jesus Christ. I started okay. this <laughs> All right, so the scripture reading we took today is from Matthew 5, 43 to 48. You can read it on your own time, but Jesus is pretty much telling them how to treat people, treat each other. And so I took the points out. And the first one is love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use and persecute you. And a lot of times I feel like people... Or I'll say believers, um, it's they feel more comfortable loving or showing love to people who show them kindness or who love them. I guess that's easy for a lot of people to do, um, but it's hard when you feel like your spouse is coming against you, your, your spouse is being unkind, um, is not saying good words to you, the lovey-dovey words that you want to hear and all that good stuff, and people find it hard to walk in the spirit it's easier for us to just go in our flesh and we just want to curse our spurses out we just want to curse them out right we just we get so angry a lot of times that we forget that god says to pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you and you're probably going through some persecution in your marriage i don't know or at some point we all go through things in our marriage and it's hard for us to stop for a moment, pray and ask God to show us how to walk in the spirit. And I find myself there sometimes, but thank God I've grown and I am growing. I'm still growing, right, babe? Mm -hmm. We're all growing. <laughs> We're all growing. So yeah, um, that's what we want to talk about today. What do you have to add to that? Well, I just think that um, when you're thinking about yourself and, and everything in the world, teaches you to take care of yourself. But everything in the Bible teaches you to take care of others. Jesus' sacrifice was for others. We have, we're supposed to think of other people as well as ourselves and not just our own things. We're supposed to love one another. Jesus always had us express and love outward and not just to ourselves, not to pamper ourselves and build ourselves up but we're supposed to build each other up your spouse builds you up and you build your spouse up you you let them know that they look great and that they're a wonderful person and they let you know instead of them striving to look at magazines or look at other couples and be like that so they can prove for themselves that they're great you you encourage them and you let them know that this is how I feel about you. This is how I view you. This is how I see you. And, and that is an issue that a lot of worldly ways have creeped into the church. We, we, do, we live the way a lot of people who don't know God live because we've just merged ourselves with the world in so many aspects, you know? A lot of people don't like the scriptures that say, come out from among them and be separate. Because, oh, they think, oh, that's not loving. No, but God tells you why to be separate. Because evil communication corrupts good manners. When you hang around them and you fellowship continuously with them, they're going to corrupt your manners and you're going to become like them. They're not going to become like you. So... It's, it's, it's better for you to stay separate and stay around people who are like-minded like you so you can sharpen each other and encourage each other and help build each other up. Yeah, so I have a few scriptures I want to go through um, about doing good because as believers, when we're called to the faith, um, we are supposed to do good. And the first one comes from Galatians 6 verse 10. And it's a New King James Version. I'm going to read verse 10 first, then verse 9. It says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, 
Let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. So as you're in your marriage and you have opportunity, do good. When your spouse is not acting probably godly the way you think they should act towards you, um, that's an opportunity. That's an opportunity for us to do good, whether male or female in the relationship. Because a lot of times, I know I've seen a lot of posts online, a lot of people saying a lot of things fall on the female when things aren't going well in the marriage. I don't think that's necessarily the case in every situation, but it seems in the majority. But God says that in every opportunity you have, you should do good. So if your spouse is acting crazy towards you, do good. Pray for them. They might be going through something from work. Somebody may have said something. They may be offended. Some demonic spirit is probably attacking their mind. So do good and pray for them. Do something good. Verse 9 says in Galatians 6, 9, New King James Version, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. And I see this a lot in people's marriages why people want to get divorced. They've lost heart. That's the truth. They've lost heart. They probably were doing good. They were praying. They're not seeing the results that they probably are expecting. They probably want to see it in a week, a month, a year, short period of time. But the scripture is very clear that says, do not grow weary while doing good. You keep doing what God is asking you to do towards your spouse. They're seated and God is at work behind the scenes. So don't lose heart. And in James 4, 17, it even says, Therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. When you know to do good and you don't do it, you're sinning. You're sinning against God. Why? Because he's commanded us to do good, to do good to all, our enemies, our friends, our loved ones, everybody. And a lot of people live in the Old Testament law where they do an eye for an eye. I'll do good if they do good, whatever they do to me, that's what I'm gonna do to them. If my husband's not acting right, I'm not gonna act right towards him. If my wife is not acting right, I'm not gonna act right towards her. And that's not what God told us to do. God told us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We are supposed to do what he tells us to do in every situation, no matter how the other person is acting. We are not to react to circumstances, but we are to act on the word of God. And, and that's important because when, you, when you're reacting to something all the time, it's really directing and controlling your actions when the word of God should be directing and called controlling your actions. I mean, your, your circumstances have become like an idol to you. Right. It's ruling your life and it's lording over you instead of the word, Jesus, our Savior, lording over us. And it's important that you don't let these things sneak in and deceive you into thinking that you're justified in disobeying God's word. None of us are just ever justified in disobeying God, whether we like it or not. When we accepted him as Lord and Savior, we signed up to be his ministers in this earth as long as he would have us there until he brings us home. And what he asks us to do is not suggestions. They're called commandments. And he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, a lot of people would say, I do love you, God but you don't know what this person has done to me. Yeah. Of course he knows what he's done to you. Look what they did to Jesus on the cross. And he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he set the example. He's not asking us to do anything that he didn't do. He, he, was, he was the example for all of us so we will be able to follow. And he didn't leave us to do it on, with our own willpower. He gave us Holy Spirit to live in us, to empower us to do the right thing. All we have to do is ask him, and he will empower us. He will, he will heal the hurt. He will, he will take away the evil thoughts. And, and if you get in your word and you surround, you think on good things, things are pure and lovely and a good report. Instead of thinking of evil things, I'm going to kill him. I'm not going to cook his dinner. He's cut off from all activities with me. Then your mind will get renewed to doing good. 
And it's an effort that you have to make on your own. It's not just going to happen. You have to fight the good fight of faith, obeying the word of God. Absolutely. That was good. We're just not going to cook his dinner today. <laughs> and that's going to solve the problem. No, it's just going to make the problem worse. <laughs> All right. Now, Hebrews 13, verse 16 says, But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices... God is well pleased. So God is pleased when you do good. Why? Because when somebody is doing bad to you, your feelings, they're all riled up. They're all, you're all in your flesh. Your feelings are overwhelming you. And to move in faith and to do good, that is faith. To do good, to do what God says, despite what you're feeling, despite, despite what the devil might be whispering in your ears. And God says he's well pleased when we do good and we don't forget to communicate. Okay, so I want to go over a few meanings of a few words that um, I wanted to look up as I was going over love your enemies. So we're going to look over the meaning enemy. An enemy is one that is antagonistic to another one, seeking to injure, overthrow, or confound an opponent. One that seeks to harm or weakens someone or something else. That is an enemy. So the person might be trying to come against you to arm you, and they are being influenced by demonic spirits, and we have to know that. And that's why we have to love them, because love, perfect love, casted out fear, right? God is love, and we have to walk in that love. Now, the word antagonistic, and I love looking up words, and a lot of you probably already noticed from my previous videos. Um, it means actions that are malicious and unkind, Actively opposing or unfriendly hostility toward another person. And I've had a lot of people who were antagonistic in my own life. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's not hard to do good to somebody who is, you feel like they're getting on top of your nerves. But that is where God comes in. That is where faith comes in. And you have to move and obey what God tells you to do. Love your enemies. And it, it is hard at first. Because you're self-centered. The flesh makes you self-centered. And when you get in the word of God and you take your eyes off yourself and you put your eyes on him and you do things to please him, then it's, it becomes easier. Why? Because you recognize this is an attack from the enemy to separate you, to break your fellowship with your Lord. And if you love him, you don't ever want to break fellowship with him. Right. You know, so... When you spend time with him, you'll grow to love him, and it'll be easy to love your enemies. It'll be easier not to just think of yourself. It, it'll it'll be, become easier day by day as you know him more and more. Exactly. So today, the first thing you want to do is you want to repent. We have to always live in a repentant state. We have to always repent. Something's always coming up, some evil thought. You have to repent. So Repent today and just decide to love your enemies. Do good to those who are hurting you, especially your spouse, and pray for your spouse. It's super important for us husbands and wives to pray for each other, to make sure God is the center of everything we do, no matter what we feel, no matter what we see. I can tell you, and I'm sure for Kenneth as well, if we were not close to God, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to say we've been married for going on 19 years this year. And I'm excited about that. And every day I wake up and see him, I'm extremely excited to see this lovely guy. <laughs> um, yeah, so repent today and God will restore you and just do good. Every time the devil comes to you and he's trying to get you to do something evil towards your spouse, he's there waiting, whispering, telling you all this bad stuff to do. Just submit yourself to God in a spirit of meekness without resisting God and repent and just do good. And if it's an area in your life that you have to deal with, you open the word of God and find the scriptures dealing with that and you meditate on that until it becomes a part of you. You just keep going over and over. Make, make that word become alive to you and real to you until you just habitually act on it. And it, it, it'll be much easier. Absolutely. So thank you guys. Hopefully we add some edification to your life and make sure to like and subscribe and share the video and we will see you in the next one. Bye bye.